update. My mother tried to trick me, female 26, into joining my sister, female 31, for dinner after she tested me around her husband, male 31. Original post. This is actually crazy and there's going to be lots of details, so please bear with me. My sister recently got married. It's been about three to four months. I didn't really see much of them after the wedding, honeymoon, and then back to work. But once a month, our family all gets together and my parents host a huge feast. Since this took place a week ago, it was for the month of August. During this dinner, my brother-in-law was being extremely weird towards me. He was complimenting my body, ignoring my sister and just straight up acting so strange. It was completely unexpected for several reasons. One being his wife was sitting right next to me, and two, he has only been married a few months. Also, he's just never spoken to slash about me like that before. I felt really uncomfortable, and I'm sure it transpired to the rest of the room. Because WTF? Except it was weird, because nobody was pointing anything out. I was extremely confused and just wanted to leave. So I left early, but when I got home, I just felt so icky. I don't even know how to describe it. I decided to message my sister and let her know his behavior made me uncomfortable. I told her that it was also concerning he felt comfortable enough to say these things in front of my parents and brother. I explained that if she didn't feel comfortable being in the middle, I wouldn't mind explaining this to him myself. His behavior was so unnerving that I FaceTimed my boyfriend who was away for work in the US. I told him it was weird and how suddenly my brother-in-law's behavior towards me went from that of sibling to this horribly uncomfortable situation. He was mad, rightfully so. My sister didn't respond to my texts until the next day. She asked to meet up, so I did. I was expecting her to be upset and to have him apologize for what he said. Instead, she admits it was all a test, and I passed. I was confused to say the least. What did she mean by a test? Fast? Like, what's going on? Turns out, she had her husband do those things on purpose because she wanted to see how I would react if he had said those things to me and meant them. My reaction and choice to message her afterwards told her I could be trusted around him. I was offended to say the least. Why would you think I couldn't be trusted? Well, let me tell you the, in my opinion, not very valid reason for this lack of trust. My sister has been married before. She was 27 and the divorce was about 10 months into marriage. Her ex was a psycho to say the least. He had known me longer than he did my sister and I was the one who had introduced them. They got along well and eventually started dating. It looked like the healthiest and most romantic relationship to grace planet Earth, except when they got married. During their marriage, I was staying with them because it was a closer commute to work. They had extra bedrooms, and I would pay rent and cook and clean for myself. My underwear would often go missing. It started off small, and I just assumed it got mixed up in my sister's laundry and would turn up eventually. But it was happening more frequently to the point I was buying underwear weekly. I kept pressuring my sister to admit she was stealing my underwear, and she was adamant it wasn't her. I decided to just ignore it and go about my day. Something I hadn't even considered an option was the real reason. My ex-brother-in-law was stealing my underwear. I don't know, nor did I want to know what he was doing with it when I found out. But I was so disgusted and confused. Someone I thought was my friend was actually just a perv. He admitted he had never really loved my sister and was just using her to get to me. I was just so creeped out, and I pressed charges against him for his sickening behavior. I was able to get a restraining order, and my sister divorced him almost instantly after finding out. She used something traumatic that happened to me, and flipped it to make it seem like I'm the one who was untrustworthy. She claimed I must have strung him along for him to think like that, and this test was just to prove I wasn't doing it again. Safe to say, I was extremely hurt and angry by her response, so I told her to never speak or contact me again if that's what she really thought of me. The family found out, and for the most part agree her behavior is crazy. But my mother stood by her actions, and said my sister was just trying to protect herself from being hurt again. I told her if she had just been honest with me from the start, I wouldn't have been as bothered. There's a right way to approach things in a wrong way. This isn't just wrong, it's also crazy. Why is she so adamant it's my life goal to hurt her? I didn't know that her ex was going to turn out like that, so why am I being punished? She claimed I should have had some indication he liked me, but he really made it seem like he was head over heels for my sister. How am I supposed to know what's going on in someone else's mind? Anyway, the family dinner was early for this month as it was the most compatible date for everyone's schedules. Yesterday, I told my parents to expect me not to show up if my sister and brother-in-law were going. 
It wasn't even because I refused to ever speak to her again. I had just said that because the situation was so fresh, I told my mother I would apologize when I had cooled down a little. It was just difficult to face them when they made me feel like a horrible person for a situation that was out of my control. My mother assured me my sister wouldn't attend, so I agreed to come. When I arrived, they were both there. It felt like an ambush and it sort of was. My sister demanded I apologize for my reaction because it was my own fault. It happened in the first place. I can't lie, I snapped. I told her she should remove my number and the title of being my sister if she really felt that way. I just need advice because therapy isn't scheduled for another two weeks and I feel like I just dreamt a soap opera storyline. I feel kind of bad because I do understand my sister had her trust broken completely by her ex. But I feel that this trust shouldn't be aimed at me, but a person who actually caused it. And I was the one who introduced her to the a-hole in the first place, so I feel guilty for that already. But I'm failing to see how her schemes to manipulate me into thinking she's being wronged by a husband once again is just far too extreme. 1. I want to apologize to her for one reason, ever introducing that man to her. 2. I really need her to see that I wasn't trying anything when her ex was stealing my underwear. I was just as in the dark as her. How do I go about doing the above because I want to put this behind me and move on? I was just about healing from her former marriage, and now this one is also putting me in a very uncomfortable position. With my sister, my brother-in-law and my own mother. Any advice on how to tackle apologizing, getting my sister's trust back, and showing her I truly just want the best for her? Now for the top advice before reading the update. You have nothing to apologize for. Stop accepting the blame for something you had no part in other than being the victim. If your sister's ex was talking you and she was caught in a crossfire. Then all this nonsense with her new husband, you have nothing to apologize for there either. Honestly, your sister and your mom are crazy. They're blaming you for the fact that your sister came into contact with a crazy person stalking you and fell for him. Then to absolve her of all the blame for not realizing what was going on, it's become all your fault? Do not apologize. Do not make compromises with them. Your sister is a horrible, disrespectful POS, and I would cut all contact with her until she makes some kind of apology and contrition. You are being painted as the bad guy because something bad happened to you. Personally, I would remove myself from both their lives until they either see the light or they would not see me again. You don't need your sister's trust back. She literally played you with some weird fake test to prove you were honest when you had never been dishonest in the first place. Ignore those people. Get angry. You are being disrespected in this as much as you were disrespected by that horrible prick she married. The fact that the other two went along with us paints them as being as bad as she is. I cannot sit in a room with these three awful freaking simulacrums of human beings for a moment without some major apologizing and butt kissing. And even then, I would most likely never be able to speak civilly to them again. This is insane. So your sister is going to blame you for the actions of others and to suggest you tried to entice the first husband is truly offensive. The fact that your mother and brother-in-law went along with her charade is equally disgusting. I don't think any amount of convincing will make her see common sense as she seems to have made up her mind about you which makes me wonder about the state of her mental health. I think you're well within your rights to go no contact with these people for a while. If your sister is this insecure, I suspect she'll be on divorce number two relatively soon because I feel it's only a matter of time before she'll be accusing the new husband of infidelity and you'll get the last laugh. So sorry you're going through this, OB. Now for the update. A lot has happened the last couple of days. I've tried to read all the comments and take in everyone's advice. And this has been the outcome. I lost a sister and a mother in two days. It's heartbreaking more than anything. I'd meet up with everyone. My boyfriend came with me, so I had support during the conversation. Honestly, it was hard to look at any of them for the way they treated me. I'm so thankful for everyone opening my eyes to the crazy behavior exhibited in the first part of this story. In front of everyone, my mother admitted to knowing about the plans from the start. Sister confided in her, and she agreed it was a good idea. She supported her son-in-law openly harassing her daughter. I'm in complete shock, and it just hurts so much knowing she would condone this considering she knew how much I was affected by the first husband. She knew I was having a difficult time in therapy. It took me a long time to trust people again after that. And I feel like once again, my trust has been broken. I don't know how I'm ever going to trust anyone again. I'm really thankful my boyfriend was there to comfort me because it was so hard keeping my composure around them. 
My sister was not budging at all. She kept maintaining she was in the right. She said the only reason I wouldn't apologize is because deep down I knew what her ex was like. She said I just liked getting attention from him knowing he was married to my sister. She also claimed I overreacted, and if it's acting, then it's not harassment. I told her she shouldn't expect any calls slash texts or just not be contacted by me until I receive the apology I deserve from both her and my brother-in-law. Speaking of, he was pretty silent throughout the whole thing, probably because my father threatened his life if he spoke bad about me. He did say that the only reason he did it was to placate my sister because she kept accusing him of ogling me, but still no apology from him. My mother, this one broke my heart the most. She told me I was over-exaggerating and that I should be happy to have passed my sister's test. She actually said the words, we can all move on now. I was in complete awe to be honest. How could she think that things would just go back to normal after this? I asked why she was supporting such delusional behavior and she said it was because she loved my sister and wanted her to be happy. I asked her if she loved me as much as my sister and she said yes. It seemed hesitant but I don't want to read too much into that. I told her I wanted an apology for her schemes. She refused, so I gave her the same conditions I gave my sister and brother-in-law. Until I get an apology, I simply am not speaking to all three of them. As a result, I also probably have to go low contact with my brother and dad because they both live with my mother. I mean, I'll hang out with them outside and without a presence of my mother, but if she let them is the question. I know some of you have suggested spending time with my boyfriend's family on holidays and occasions. I think it was just one person, but oh well. I haven't met my boyfriend's family before because they live in the US. But after this situation, I've taken two weeks paid holiday for the end of this month and is taking me to meet them for the first time. I hope it goes well because they might be the only family I have now. My therapy session has been moved to tomorrow because I requested an emergency appointment. Wish me luck. Anyway, my biggest thanks goes to all you Redditors for helping me see the situation for what it was. For your advice and compassion, I'm really grateful. I don't think I would have been able to get through this on my own. It's likely I would have caved and apologized just for the pattern to repeat itself. Truly, thank you so much. Wishing you all the best, and I hope you know that your advice might have just saved me from my need to always please others. I'll look back on this moment anytime I feel like putting someone else's feelings above my own comfort. Hope your hearts are filled with love and happiness. Never saw the original post until now, but wow. Good for you, OP. I absolutely would not have anything to do with either of them until they recognized their behavior was unacceptable as well. Also, can't say I have very much faith in your sister's new marriage if she finds this acceptable. Regardless, glad you made a decision you're at peace with. Thank you. It was a difficult decision. Our culture is centered around family, which is why we would get together as much as possible. It's going to be strange not seeing them as often, but my memories with them have been tainted by this horrible experience. I'm proud of you. You did the right thing, and I know it wasn't easy. I hope your trip to the US goes well. Another thing to think about is, it's not bad if you don't have family get-togethers at holidays. You and your boyfriend are a family, and you can build new traditions together. Thank you. And I love the idea of creating new traditions with my boyfriend especially because we have lots of couple friends, and I've always loved the idea of hosting a huge party with them all. Last story. I abandoned my family because my daughter knew about my wife's affair for money. I will keep this as short as possible, but basically I'm a 43 male. I got my childhood sweetheart 43 female pregnant and had my daughter 25 female. She was considered a miracle child because the pregnancy was that difficult for my wife that she was never able to have kids again which sucked, but it worked out perfectly in the end. My daughter was incredible. Now 2023 comes. My wife cheated on me with a friend of hers, which I discovered by signing into her Facebook. Invasion of privacy, I know, but curiosity struck. And I'm saying this out of pure hatred, but he was an ugly bastard. But he had one thing, money. I immediately called my daughter and persuaded her to come to our house as it was urgent. And she was quite nervous, which was quite strange. But now looking back, I'm assuming my wife found out and knew about the affair somehow, some way, and told her. She arrives at our house and I confronted my wife, and she didn't deny anything. Heartless, in fact. And she scolded me for having no affection, lacking intimacy. But I was trying to achieve our goal of early retirement. My daughter could have kept quiet, but it scolded my wife for cheating and called her a whore. 
And while she isn't wrong, it caused my wife to expose her. My wife stated that she's had an affair since the pandemic ended and my daughter discovered. And the affair partner gave her lots of money to keep her quiet. She tried apologizing, but it wasn't enough. I was heartbroken. My daughter meant everything to me and my wife, and they destroyed me. So I just left the house, waited for nightfall, ignored every phone call from my daughter, and came back, packed up my clothes and left. I expected my wife to be home, but she went out probably to be with a fair partner. Now while I have lost my family, I still have my wife's share of our early retirement which she can't get her hands on, so I have now lots of money to splash, and I guess I can try and start all over. I have also blocked my daughter and my wife. I don't want any association with them. Now for the comments. I thought you had to split retirement and a divorce. Maybe it's the state I'm in. I know after 15 years of marriage, my husband's company considers the first wife as the beneficiary, even if you divorce and remarry. I imagine that is different for companies and not all even pay a spouse pension. I'm positive that the retirement fund my husband and I have, I would get half if we divorced. I will have to look into that. I hate to tell you this, Opie, but you are going to have a QDRO done that basically splits your retirement savings in half. Sorry for this crappy situation. I'm sorry, but remember, you are only 43 years old. You still can build a life and a family that will always be there for you. I'm sorry with what you are experiencing currently, especially the betrayal of your daughter. Hopefully with therapy you can move forward, and I mean in your life, not with those gross people, and find content. And always remember, 40s is the new 30s. You're not wrong. Life expectancy has increased over the years. But I'm at disbelief. 